Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And it's very important to remember that whilst the Naquium is one of the most exciting things that's going on at the moment, there are other people doing other fun stuff as well uh, during the stream and just getting all kinds of new things set up. So let's take a look at what everyone else has been up to in the last stream. The first thing that I want to take a look at is uh, Mike's expedition out to Androgon, and this is a another planet in the, in the uh, in our solar system, and this one is a stone primary, and so this means it's it's, it's quite small. It's a moon of Talos, uh, and it ha um, it's only only well it's under 800 meters or 800 units across, but it's it's a stone primary, and that means there's a lot of stone available on it for the taking. And I've been a bit worried over the last few uh, episodes about the amount of stone we've got available. Uh, we do have quite a lot of it coming out of our core mining and our all all of the uh, processing that's going on of all the other ores and things but we always seem to be a little bit short of it but basically kind of hanging on and okay and so I thought uh, since Mike was looking for something to do while he waits for the uh, the Naquium to start flowing so we can start doing more advanced researches and things I thought it'd be a good idea for him to go running off and, and basically do what he did over on Oliran, which was the uh, the iron planet where we have a very, very simple uh, system that's hooked up to some core mines it pulverizes the cores down into iron and stone and cores pulverizes the uh, those cores further down into more iron and some other bits and pieces as well and then feeds all of that over to Norvis so if we've got that coming over why not do the same on a stone primary so over, over on this planet we have some huge patches of stone look how dense this one is if I go over to map view we can see there's a 30 million in that patch there's 73 million in this one that's a lot of stone but more importantly we've got the core seams and there's about 12 of them on this moon because it, it's quite small we've explored the whole thing already and so we'll be able to get a decent flow of um, stone core chunks coming through from there. And if you pulverise a stone core chunk, you get an enormous quantity of stone out of it. And then another core chunk that can be turned into some more stone and some side effects, some byproducts as well. And so we're going to load all of those up onto a spaceship that's going to park in here up in orbit and then ship that over to Norbis and bring it down in the secondary elevator over to here where it looks like, I think, I presume Tristan, yes, Tristan has set up an unloading station for it here. So we'll have another set of trains coming down, dropping off stone, that can be brought over to a low priority station over here. So we're still going to be trying to use up all of the stone that's coming from the core mining and the core processing first because, you know, that's that's a byproduct that we need to get rid of in order to keep everything else running. However, if we ever start to run a little bit low on it, we can top it up with the stone that's going to come out from Androgon. Now the thing that's a little bit notable about Androgon is it is also, it's, as you see here, it says Bytometeor on it and that is because it is a vitamelange uh, moon as well so there is a small amount of vitamelange on it uh, and so there's a couple there are a few different options there are a few different ways we could deal with this we could go over there with a plague rocket hit it with a plague rocket and kill absolutely everything sterilize the planet that'll turn all the vitamelange into coal um, and then we won't get bitemeteors anymore and can be relatively easy to defend alternatively we can take a look at it and go, well, it's such a small planet. There's a few biters here, there's a few in the middle over here, um, and oh, and a few down here at the bottom. That's about it. Somebody with a machine gun could go around and clear these out without too much difficulty, and we've got much better weapons than machine guns. So we could clear them all out, and and, and, uh, and then and then the planet would be friendly. And if we put a rack of, um, of, of meteor defense air guns in orbit as well, then that'll keep it safe, and, and it'll probably stay biter-free. So we should then have, have a safe planet without having to go out there and use another plague rocket. And... The plague rockets are great, but I always, I do always feel a little, little bit bad about using them because I feel like we should be able to deal with one of these planets in a, a, without without having to wipe out all, all life forms on the planet entirely. The other amusing thing about this planet is it's so small that uh, Mike was saying he's very, very tempted to come out here and try and just harvest absolutely everything on it, every single resource. So we've got a little patch down here of a million rare metals. We've got thirty-seven thousand cryonite, another twenty-two thousand cryonite there. We've got a big patch of copper over here that's about a third of a million, so it's not not actually that big got little bits of vitamin lunch. so it would actually be put it would be reasonable and feasible to go out here pull up all of the resources and just t chuck them onto a spaceship to be taken away and call it and then just see if we can actually manage to uh, loot the entire planet the hardest part of that would be digging up the 73 million stone because that actually is a lot the rest of it they're all quite small patches sub a million so they would it would just disappear straight into our processing and uh, never to be seen again now okay for, for the basic ones the the iron the copper the stone the rare metals they, they, that would that be very very easy you just feed them into the processing facility uh, the core that deals with the core chunks normally and it and it would and then it would be absolutely fine they'd all get processed and used up uh, the the most slightly more exotic things like the vitamelange and the cryonite those would be a little bit more effort oh and the immersite over here those would be a little bit more effort to deal with because they'd have to be um, sent over to different planets to be processed down and dealt with over there but 
you know, I think with enough um, pig-headed stubbornness, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure it would be quite possible. And uh, and that's something that we tend to have quite a lot of. And I, and I don't just mean Mike in this. We, we, we all have a fair amount of stubbornness. That's why we uh, play these difficult mod packs. <laughs> I do like the way the cliffs seem to be following around the edge of the uh, of the lake over here. It does make this area in the middle feel like a bit of a highland. Um, Irondale has done some impressive stuff with the uh, terrain generation for these planets. And so that is the plan with Andragon. Uh, so far, it has got uh, Mike has built up a big solar array here, so we have oodles of power. He's put in the blueprint for the spaceport, but hasn't, but I believe hasn't programmed it up yet, and, and the guns over here. There's still quite a lot of work to do, but I'd say he's probably done he's probably done at least a third of it, maybe maybe even half of it. So that's going pretty well. We'll have an an, an unlimited limited supply of stone before we know it. Things have also been happening over in Bigrid. Tristan has come out here and has been uh, doing some hard work on making sure that things actually work properly. <laughs> so um, one of the one, one problem we had, which we saw in the last video, was that there was a spaceship parked here. There was a problem with the cry with the uh, cryonite that was being brought over, and it, it, it the problem was that it wasn't being put into the uh, it was being t it wasn't being blocked from being unloaded over here. So now what he's probably done, yes, there we go. There's a, there's a, a cryonite rod uh, exception on here as well, saying don't unload cryonite rod no matter how much there is. So now it'll go into the train it won't come back out again so what this meant had happened was it had come out here it had flowed back up here and it had gone back into the spaceship and so because the space because the unloading system monitors what has gone into the spaceship to make sure it doesn't unload it again rather than having rather than having specific things whitelisted or blacklisted it just says if, if something has been put into the spaceship then I won't unload it again that meant that over here the, 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 we put the cryonite in and then, because cryonite had been put in, it wasn't taking the cryonite back out again. So that led to some confusion and some problems, and probably to the spaceship not departing. Now, if, you, we, we, if we look along here, we can see there's quite a lot of the uh, there's quite a lot of the vitalic epoxy. We've got about a thousand, and we've got about fourteen hundred of, of it in here, and that's good because we're getting through a lot of that, trying to make all of the um, the high high tier productivity modules as we looked at in the last video. Um, but also, there's a load of other stuff in here as well. It looks like the system is flowing quite nicely. If we go back down to the opposite end. Um, we can see that actually none of the Vita products are flowing through at the moment. I think I might need to start requesting a bit more of the uh, of the Vitalik Epoxy. Oh no, no, I take it back. The Vitalik Epoxy is flowing through. It's just being made rather slowly. So maybe we need to start making that faster. That said, I think the only reason we've got through quite so much of it is because somebody decided they wanted 150 tier six, no tier seven um, productivity modules. So that was a bit that's rather expensive and a bit greedy, and so that's pulled through in enormous quantities compared to what we would normally be needing. Um, that said, we do need those. So maybe maybe some improvements to the speed of production is it would be a good idea over here. While he was messing around over here, Tristan also set the uh, the bigger train to only leave when there's a good reason to. So before, it had got into a weird state where, I, I can't remember if there's a shortage of something on the ground or a shortage of something up here, but the train was just going round and round and round with nothing to carry. So I believe Tristan has now reprogrammed it so that it won't come up unless either it's got loads of stuff to bring up or there is a big, or, or there is stuff up here to be brought down that has run out down on the planet. So, for example, if we run out, if we ran out of, um, I don't know, cryonite, because that's something we've been, we've, we've been talking about. If the planet has run out of cryonite, there um, and there is some available up in space, then the train will come up to go come and get it. But if there isn't any in either place, then it won't go. Well, I'll just it won't go. Well, I'll just go up there and see if there's any available. It'll go. Well, I know there isn't any available, so I'll just wait down here. Thank you very much. There's no point in me running back and forwards for no good reason. Uh, and so that'll save. It'll save a bit of wear and tear on batteries, it'll save a small amount of electricity. It's not a particularly important thing to be saving the system from, but it also, but on the flip side, it feels a bit frustrating when a train is just going round and round and round forever. It's a bit, it's just a bit unnecessary. Over at the other end of the biologicals, well, I was grumbling last week about how we still have all, all these delivery uh, cannon chests along here. Well, it's not so much that we had the chests, it's that the chests were still in use. So um, there, were, there were still three resources. I believe it was the uh, lithium chloride, the fertilizer, and the coal were still being brought in by delivery cannon. And I wasn't very impressed with that. That's not how we're supposed to be doing things at this stage of the game. So um, again, we, we tasked that one uh, over to uh, Mike, and he has, he has now set up a system where, so, well, he already had um, coal being brought up to his system of night mares over here so we've got the uh, we've got the coal a coal train here which has been brought up by the by the shuttle that brings up all the miscellaneous and then unloads it into the into all of the the uh, the warehouses along here so a train can grab it and take it away to wherever it's needed but i believe he is also i was going to say he is also yes here we go down here <laughs> he's also now added on lithium chloride and fertilizer so those are also being brought up and that means they can be brought from here over to the biological science area where they can be dropped off in the appropriate stations here and we now have a nice ready supply of fertilizer without having to use the delivery cannons. This means that down on Nor uh, Norvis itself we don't need to use these delivery cannons anymore they will no longer be these will no longer be sending the lithium chloride up to space however I imagine there is now a train somewhere pulling lithium chloride from here maybe it's 
Oh no, no, there is, there is, there, there is a mark belt, uh, laid by Mike, but it is a mark belt because that is our term for a belt that just goes that's sort of longer than seems sensible. Uh, that comes all the way down here and goes into the massive um, bus-like system down here for loading all of the various different trains up. Uh, Mike did have a bit of a dilemma about whether it was whether it was too horrendous to run a belt from here down to here. Um, we, I think, I think we managed to convince him by pointing out that running a belt from here to here would actually be a shorter belt than going up from the stations down here and running it up this way. Uh, I'm not sure it is actually shorter, but it's it's pretty comparable. Running, bringing the lithium chloride down here by train just to bring it up here by another long belt seems fairly crazy. I mean, this is the sort of the, the way Factorio goes, though. Your base expands and expands to the point where you you think, well, this is these are the tr this is the tr these here are, this, are the stations that drop drop stuff off to be passed over to the trains up here to be taken up into space. But they're not actually that close together, which is why we yeah we have these crazy long belts with, frankly, huge amounts of resources tied up on them. But but we we, we couldn't really get these that much closer. Maybe maybe we could have put them. Maybe we should have put all of this a bit lower down, and we could have had a rack of stations along the top of here, but then we'd, have, we'd probably end up with, I, I don't know, I, I think this is about as close as we realistically could have got them. Maybe on the other side of this junction would have made sense, but then we'd have had split uh, belts coming up and splitting off in both directions. This is this is just re about as close as it seemed sensible to put them, so yeah, I think it's just it just shows the, the, the scale of the factory, doesn't it? Whether you, you, the, that this sort of distance now seems like quite it seems really short and and running a belt from um, from here down to here seems like the reasonable way to do it uh, yeah it's just the factory must grow and the factory has grown and um, yeah in it now it now sort of dwarfs the, the, our bus is over over here and the rest of the factory just dwarfs it some some of the actual areas like module city up here are it's not as big as the main bus but it's comparable uh, some of the the drop-off stations up here for the for the bus. If we put them all in a line and included all these ones down here, that would probably be longer than the bus itself. So, yeah, the um, the factory has indeed grown. To be fair, the same sort of thing is true if we look up in, up in space as well. We've got our main space bus going across here, and yes, okay, it's got the widest of all the buses, but I think some of the science ones, especially if we include the material one over here, are just as just as big in, in sort of sheer volume and number of machines and stuff as the as the main space mall. Uh, the, the Astro Science and actually the Energy Science over here as well are both probably have more machines and certainly the, I would say more machines than the entire mall part of it, even including the tower of construction going up here. So yeah, the um, whilst the mall originally seems like it's going to be the thing that does all of the production, it doesn't stay like that for long. Earlier I talked about Oliran and how that is the place that is supplying all of our iron these days and the spaceship has gone off over there to go and get some more because we're getting through it at quite a rate. Last week I also talked about how we had a bit of an iron crisis that was at least half my fault and half um, we haven't assigned blame for at the moment. Uh, <coughs> uh, I, I don't think it was me though. Anyway, uh, so yes, the spaceship has been flying backwards and forwards trying to restock everything over here, trying to bring our supplies of iron back up to a useful level. And if we look, take a look at the graphometer, it looks like things are actually going quite well. Um, over here we have virtually full iron plates, we have very virtually full um, iron ingots, steel is happy as well, everything seems to be great. Ah, here is the uh, the stone concern I was talking about earlier and why we have dispatched uh, Mike over to Andragon to go and get some more of it. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to sh I'm glad that sort of supports my, my earlier comments. We seem to have a bit of a blip in the um, in the matter science going on over here, but I think that's probably just a, a little bit of a blip because uh, a train's gone or something like that. But I'll look into that more next time. And so there's been some uh, been some work on the on the iron production system. So it's been brought down as we've discussed before down here, and it looks like we have a decent amount of it here. The train hasn't come back over to get some more of it, so maybe it's in the in the process of delivering some at the moment. But that train then brings it all up over to here, where it can be dropped off here to be smelted into more iron. In fact, oh, it's probably these trains here. Are you the are you the ones that go? Down to yeah, they'll be the super low priority ones, probably. Probably. Uh, yeah, so the, the, all that iron ore gets brought in here, it can then be turned into, and it can be turned into iron. And Tristan has done some improvements up here as well, including upgrading all of the modules in here to tier 3. Apparently we were only using tier 2s before, so that's, uh, that's definitely a worthwhile upgrade. Going from tier 2 to tier, tier, two to tier 3 will get us... I don't know. Is it a 50% boost? I'm, I'm not sure exactly. It's going to be a significant increase to the amount of bonus that we get, and given the way the bonus is all stacked, I think that's very, very worth having. He says he's also upgraded some chemical plants. Um, not these ones, he hasn't. Uh, these are still normal chemical plants, not advanced ones. Oh, he's, oh, he's done some over here for, the, for, uh, for this part, for the steel processing. Okay. 
Uh, no, no iron processing. Sorry, this this is iron, not steel. So he's done he's done the he's done the iron, but hasn't done hasn't done the steel. Okay, that's that's fair enough. And what's quite interesting to look at here, you can you can see the um, the scale of these sort of things, where he's got the um, we've got now got four of the advanced chemical plants in here, and they've got and they get four modules each, and he's upgraded the beacons as well. So we've now got the uh, the one beacon here that's covering all of this area and making everything run much much faster, you know, except for those which means you up at the top. But still, it's, it's helping a lot. Whereas over here we've got um, twelve of the normal speed chemical plants and lower, uh, worse, fewer modules and worse beacons and so on. It's just generally not as good. So you can see here a really obvious difference as how the sort of the sort of effects you get when you do the when you do these sort of upgrades, which is really no, really nice to see. Uh, due to the all of these upgrades, this has now increased the amount that's coming through. So he's had to upgrade the uh, out output belts, which I, I think probably means turning these ones up here into blue belts. So we now have a blue belt coming down here, and that's able to load up the uh, the systems down here. We've got we've got iron iron plates flowing in merrily. There are still places using iron plates that are demanding the motrain. I thought we'd mostly phased out or phased away from that, but it doesn't matter. It's only, it's only minor logistics costs. Um, but as you can see, we've now got absolutely full iron ingots over here. There's no train here at the moment, which means it's off going to go uh, delivering some somewhere, and we'll probably come back fairly soon. Um, but things seem to be going pretty well. This has meant that we've now got lots more iron down here being unloaded onto the main bus. If I can find, if I can, if I can find where the station is, but here it is up here. So we've got the iron, iron coming in here, and we are of course turning it into plates here because, well, that's what we use on the bus. Transporting it around as ingots is only really a thing uh, in order to keep the um, keep the logistics system a bit quieter, a bit a bit happier. And um, so, because we built everything along the bus before we had iron iron ingots, it all runs off iron plates. But now we've got, as you can see, we've got loads and loads of it. There's there's absolutely plenty over here. It's being fed down, and that should mean, hopefully, that all of our science production is caught up, is caught up again. Uh, that said, I noticed that these machines here are running basically flat out. We are churning through quite a lot of these um, uh, blank data cards, but we've got we've got caught, we've got caught up on the reds. The greens look oh, that's ammunition. The greens look caught up as well. Uh, the the blues are caught up. The greys the greys are working. Um, but the belt is mostly full, so I'd say we're doing we're doing well there. We've got a good, we've got a good a good happy quantity of those. Um, it is being fed through steadily. Um, maybe maybe this belt should be sped up a bit because we are doing quite a lot of um, uh, weapon based science at the moment. But um, yeah, so maybe so maybe some upgrades in here would be a good idea. And all the way down here at the end, the gold data looks very very happy. Okay, there is a machine running at the top here, so we have uh, oh, and now it's stopped. <laughs> so we, we've got we are basically caught up on all of the all of the uh, Norvian science packs. I would say there's I'd say there's a little bit of a shortage of the um, of the grey ones and we're going to carry on working on that and trying to produce more but basically things are looking good on that front and that's largely down to having sorted out the iron supply and a few weeks ago we I did a lot of work on, on on speeding up the production down here as well so that was all come together now and means we have the all of the all the resources we need here for Kothar, Mike has built a second spaceship. Uh, he's done this simply by copying and pasting the first one because they, well, they need to be identical. Uh, having different names is convenient, not I don't, but probably not vital. Um, but yes, he wants them to be identical. This one hasn't really been, uh, hasn't set off yet. I, I think it's just been sort of dropped into place, fueled up, and now is ready to go as and when required. Because Mike reckons that there's enough um, iridium, there's enough iridium coming through that he needs more than one spaceship to carry it all. Now, looking at this does suggest that's perhaps not true because it's just sitting there going hello and there's nothing being fed into it. Uh, maybe that's because at the other end there is a, we're still filling up with um, with iridium. Uh, it is being made slowly. But I think there've been one or two problems here since he since he left and declared the place finished. Um, notably, there is a train out of fuel down here. Um, Oh, it's a space train that's out of fuel. Oh, Mike, uh, <laughs> you're going to have to sort that out. I'm afraid that's uh, that that that's problematic, and that's going to be difficult to sort out. Tristan did fix another train on this planet that had run out of fuel, uh, but that was a that was a ground train, and so all that was required to fix it was drop in a chest next to it, fill it up with fuel, and pump the fuel into it. Um, this isn't going to work quite so well with a, with a with a space train. I do note that Mike has put a label here saying, "Look at this new thing! Wow, isn't it shiny?" I think this is this is him being a bit snarky because uh, I missed it last week. But this is I, I did I did mention that he said he'd improve the uh, production of the um, of the red beads that were being made. I didn't notice that these two belts down here were coming from way up north rather than out of the out of the middle of here. Um, so it turns out that yes yes these are running presumably are running better. But he's got a shiny new system up here running with the uh, the new advanced chemical plant making the uh, the cation beads at a much much faster rate and that's probably what's keeping his factory going so that's rather nice. Um, it looks over here like we have a bit of a problem with uh, with supply. I don't know why you're just sitting there. Oh, you're sitting there. But yes, this is related to the fuel problem again. So um, it turned out there were basically there weren't enough um, greenhouses down here producing wood in order to keep the fuel processors down here producing f uh, processed fuel fast enough to satisfy all the trains. Now, as you can see by all of these virtually full belts around here. 
but this has now been sorted. Tristan has put in presumably a ridiculous number of, um, well, there is a ridiculous number of greenhouses, and I'm imagining this is mostly Tristan's doing. Uh, yes, oh. Okay, so down to about here was Mike. Uh, so the, these ones over here were Mike. Um, and um, down to down to here as well on the other side. To be fair, Mike had put in a lot of greenhouses. It's just it turns out his uh, needs for fuel were a little bit more voracious than he was uh, bargaining for, especially because there's been quite a bit of expansion on Kothar. And it's, to be fair, it's the usual Factorio thing. You go, oh dear, I'm short of iridium in this case, so I'll send more trains off to go and get some more, more uh, iridia iridite so we can start crushing it faster, cooking it faster, making it making more and more and more of it. And then you forget that there's other things that lead up to that, so you, you maybe you need, oh look, there's, there's another uh, another train that's out, or another locomotive that's out of fuel. You uh, you, you forget that, that um, the fact that you're using, putting more trains in means you're going to be using more fuel, and therefore if you're using more fuel you need to be making more fuel, and, and so on and so on. So it's a uh, yeah, it's an easy mistake to make, but it looks like it's now probably sorted because, yeah, even this last belt here seems to be filling up. So, uh, yeah, that looks that looks pretty good now. Mike has also done more belt upgrades. So presumably, he's just pushing the green belts further and further through, so he gets more and more of the of the of, the, uh, of all of the ir iridite products flowing through a bit faster and can therefore cook them a bit more quickly. And so, if we have a look at the uh, the uh, iridium graph. Well, okay, we see a little bit of unfortunateness here. So it was running really, really well for, for this amount of time, and then this, this is probably when all the fueling problems started to happen, and so now it, it, it's got a little bit sad. But once all of that's sorted out, once we've got the um, iridite trains flowing nicely again, that's going to leap back up to here, and we'll have that nice steady supply of iridium again, and everything will be fine. Back over on Norvis, I finally got round to doing the, uh, demolishing a, a big chunk of that uh, blue circuit factory that we were talking about over here that we saw in the uh, in the previous video. I've now done it properly for real. Uh, the only bits that are left is this uh, rare metal uh, supply over here that we can get rid of with this train, or just get rid of a lot of it. The train's going to have to do several runs because there's still um, actually maybe 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 one more run will just about will just about do it. Uh, um, maybe not actually. No, there's there's slightly more there's slightly more than a train's worth here, but it's going to be a little bit fiddly to get rid of it all. We'll do that next time. And then there's a load of acid down here that also needs to be got rid of. But once we've got once we've got rid of all of this stuff, then we can finally decommission this this entire area. And I don't know, maybe turn it into a nature reserve or something because I don't think there's anything else we particularly want to build in here. Which is why I've not been in any great hurry to rip it all up. Um, even if there's a little bit left in the middle there that I somehow managed to miss. Destroying all of this caused an absolute bot frenzy. We had literally all 10,000 of our bots out picking stuff up from here and taking it away to wherever it was needed. So we've had a massive number of um, belts be brought in over here that are then getting upgraded, and uh, which is nice because we have um, we have a, a quite a quite a lot of demand for the green and the purple belts going on. So being able to feed in the lower tier ones and pass them through in order to upgrade them as, as required, as you can see going on up here, is really, really useful. It means we can keep the... Uh, keep the factory running. I mentioned also that we seem to be uh, rather short of um, electronic components on the bus, so uh, Tristan's come along here and he's dropped in a speed beacon. I think, I think that's basically how he's, uh, how he's upgraded this. All of this, all of this is probably exactly the same, and yes, these are all still the same machines that were built by me ages and ages ago. Um, but, you know, it, it, it all, like, this is apparently all it needed, and it looks like we're now caught up. The, this belt is moving slowly and jerkily, which means even though, we, even though it's still only a yellow belt, that is enough to keep everything happy. It isn't a yellow belt. This is, this is a blue belt down here. It's, just, it's a yellow belt at the top. Um, but yeah, the, this is this is now sufficient to keep the entire factory happy. So you know dropping in a speed beacon, it's, it's worked, I'm not going to knock it. He also found out that the problem with the production silence, which I believe is the teal one here, no, that's utility science. Production science is the red one. Cause, oh, yes, of course, because productivity modules are red and production science is red. I should I should be able to remember it that way. Um, yeah, so he's he's, he's apparently up, upgraded some um, um, the, the inserters here. I think it's these ones have been upgraded to green inserters because they, the the uh, limiting factor. Now that we've got all of these uh, all these modules on this and this beacon here, it turned out the limiting factor here was how fast these inserters could load the uh, the iron or the iron ingots into the um, into into the machine. Because does this get through a lot? I guess there are eight iron ingots for each one it makes, and that is that's quite a bit. It's a lot more than anything else that's going into it. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a good thing we've got that now, and that will hopefully allow us to keep up with the uh, with the rate of demand on these. Although I do notice that the uh, this belt is, is a bit a bit limited for both of them. They are chucking stuff onto it as fast as they can, um, but it's all just disappearing down, down the proverbial hole. Well, okay, the utility science isn't doing too badly. That's caught up to here. The O oh, and the production science is only only up to here, so good. They are they're they're refilling the buffers. They're, we don't we don't seem to have a construction a, a construction rate problem over here. It's just that we we pulled a load of it onto a train and now we're refilling the buffers. So the next time the train comes back, there's a load more ready to be pulled into it. That's all fine. 
And so this brings us on to the next step of the uh, of the video, and this is a return of the death counter. We've done really, really well for the last, I'm not sure how many months, uh, we're no, no, everybody has managed to actually just stay alive, and uh, mostly because we've stopped fighting the biters particularly. Uh, we, we, we don't need to fight them anymore because we've got plague rockets, and to be honest, we've pretty much got all the planets we need. However, Tristan managed to step out in front of a train. Actually, he didn't. He apparently didn't step out in front of a train. He was flying along. He turned his jetpack off and he landed in the middle of a train, which immediately ran him over, and he felt very, very silly. So, um, yeah, every, every, I'd say everyone mocked Tristan a little bit for getting run over by a train, but he still got the fewest uh, deaths of anybody in the, in the uh, any of us in the, in the game. So, um, yeah, we can't mock him that much, unfortunately. <laughs> I do notice we seem to be a little bit short of advanced uh, tech cards coming along here. I wonder whether that's something we should worry about. I'll have a look at that next time. And so to finish off, this brings us on to the researches. And as before, we've been we've been doing research kind of for the sake of it, because at the moment we don't we can't do any of the big useful advance the game researches, because they all require deep space science at this point, and we don't have the Naquium for that yet. So we're just sort of as I say, we're doing it for the sake of it. We can we can science significantly faster than we can think of things to science about. And so we've done refined flammables 9 and 10, so we've got better flamethrowers. We're not using flamethrowers. We've done zo zone discovery 113 to 120, so we've found some more planets. Uh, whoop de doo we, we didn't have enough of those. We've researched improved pollution filters, because they are better, but... We now have plague rockets and massively powerful weapons, so we don't care about pollution anymore because we've killed off most of the biters. And also, the these are, I think they're fairly expensive to make, aren't they? Yes, they require cation, anion exchange beads, imosite powder and biomatter, so we're probably not going to make them. Um, but, you know, it's there, so I guess we want, we want to research all these things for the sake of completeness, really. So I guess it's good to pick that one off. We have done weapon shooting speed, so our machine guns now and our, and our bullet turrets now fire faster. Um, this might be slightly useful, especially as Mike has gone off to a planet that has, still has some biters on it, that he might go off and go pew pew with his uh, machine gun. Or he might fly, just fly past them with loads of personal defence lasers. Uh, I, I don't know, I'm not sure how he's going to deal with them. I do know that it's not going to be difficult though. And similarly, we've done physical projectile damage 11 and 12. Uh, well, we're doing 12. We've done physical projectile damage 11. Um, so our bullets do a bit more damage, but again... <laughs> All of this stuff has been upgrading our weapons that we don't really use anymore. But as I, as I say, there, there, there's not a lot of um, there's not a lot of science left to do. We could we could mess, mess around with swarm safety, but we don't use uh, logistics bots in particularly large quantities. We're doing zone discoveries just for the hell of it. We could do rocket cargo safety, reusability, survivability, but we don't use rockets anymore. We could do zone discoveries. We could do deep space zone discoveries. I think we've done all the deep space zone discoveries, and that And when we do those, it absolutely wrecks the um, the, the astro science production because we use uh, science packs up at three times the normal rate. Uh, we could do follow our robot count, but we don't use follow our robots. We could do artillery shell, but we don't use artillery anymore. These, these it's, it's all it's all military or just upgrading things we don't really care about and so we're just picking off the ones that we, we we have there because we have these labs over here that are capable of sciencing at quite a sciencey rate and so we feel like we we kind of should be using them but to be honest there's, we're not really getting anything particularly useful out of it but then on the other hand it keeps the factory flowing it keeps all this everything running through it so we don't end up with with backlogs and jams in places so and, and I feel I do like to uh, try and complete all non-infinite researches before I before I end a game. So from that point of view, it's, it's kind of worth chugging through all of them because I don't think any none of them have gone infinite yet because the infinite ones are all the ones that require the deep space science for. So we, we there are quite a lot of these left to do. Maybe we'll just try and churn through these as quickly as we can, just for the sake of it, just to keep keep everything running. Maybe I should tell Tristan that he should do all of the rocket safety and and survivability and things. Just to just to get them ticked off, so we can say yes, we have done all of these researches. I don't know. What do you think? What, what, where, where is the level of sanity? Where, what should, what should, sort of sciences should we be doing? And what, where, which one should we be going? Well, there is actually literally no benefit in doing that. Let's just leave that at the side. Let me know in the comments because I, I I could see it going either way here. And so I think that rant has brought me to the end of the video. I'll I'll, I'll stop talking about research now before before I, before I just before I'm just complaining about it for the sake of it. Um, but yes, we sh I shall be back on Tuesday, which I believe is tomorrow, um, in order uh, for to play some more uh, satisfactory, where I shall be investigating the joys of oil processing because that is the next stage, and uh, and I expect that's going to be fairly difficult because you know these games always get hard as, as you get more and more advanced stuff to play with. They always get a bit harder and harder and harder. And steel was interesting, so I expect oil is going to be more interesting. 
Then we will of course be back on Thursday for another Factorio K2SE stream and there will be a video coming out on Wednesday uh, for, for supporters talking about the logistics of moving stuff around in space exploration. So looking, comparing the, the delivery cannons and the rockets and the, and the spaceships and the archer chests and the elevators and how they all come to, how they all compare to each other, advantages and disadvantages and the costs of moving things around. Um, and that video will come out next week for non-supporters as well. So keep an eye out for that whichever, whichever side you fall on. Uh, so finally, I should always say, always say, please uh, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, comment on it, let me know, let me know how you, th how you think things are going and what we should be doing differently, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching and goodbye.